Hi everyone, so this is lesson four now for the trick for differentiation two part. And we're on implicit differentiation, so this is what we're all about. Oh God, what's happening here? This is what we're all about. Implicit is on every exam city, and it is really, really nice and easy. I'll talk through the bump and then I'll give you the fast way of doing it, as I always do. So, right, so let's derive it. So I've got y on the left, so that means I get a dy. I've got x on the right as the variable, so that gives me a dx. I'm differentiated with respect to x, so that gives me a 3. I've got y on the left, so that's a dy. And I've got t on the right, so it gives me a dt. I know that because, because I always write this down, I know that cos goes to minus sign. The 3 was already there, but I have to do the chain rule on the 2t. So I actually get a minus 6 sine 2t. Is that on the fixed setting? No, it's not. There. And then I've got x on the left, so dx. I've got y on the right, dy. So e to the y stays as e to the y. And then y cubed becomes 3y squared, but it's times by 4, so it's 12y squared. Now what's important with this is I've got a letter equal to the other letters. I've got it in a form where I've got a single variable on the left-hand side. And that isn't always the case. So when you've done stuff like this, what you haven't done is if I had something like e so 3x plus x squared is equal to sine y minus cos y. I haven't got a single entity on the left-hand side. So this is where this implicit differentiation comes in. Because I can't always get just a simple y equals or x equals or v equals or a equals. Because that comes a bit too complex. Things like the equation, think about the equation of a circle. You can't write like an x minus 4 squared, a y minus 2 squared is, I don't know, 16. You know what that is, but I can't differentiate it with what I've got. So I can't get a single y equals that like a quadratic. Right, so that's a little bit of a factor here. Uh, so it talks about. Uh, yeah, so these are just equations there, just like I said over there. Now it says if we differentiate y, so if we differentiate y, it's dy, with respect to x, you get dx. Because with respect to is telling me which bit to do it with. Then it says if you differentiate x with respect to x, you get dx by dx. Y with respect to y, you do y, do y. Uh, y squared with respect to x is a little bit harder. I'll just do these over here. Y squared with y. I don't know what I'm going to ignore them. This is, this is all bumping. Now this here is the important bit. For implicit, all I have to do, so ignore all the junk I've been going on about, all I have to do is differentiate it, and then because it's the wrong letter, because I want it with respect to x, and it's in terms of y, I just stick a dy by dx on the end. So if you look, I was differentiating y squared with respect to x, the wrong letter. So if I differentiate the y squared, it's 2y, but because it's the wrong letter, I stick a dy by dx next to it. Now this will give you a big equation with lots of dy by dx's in it. So never write dy by dx equals it. The only reason you've done that in the past is because you had y equals. So we get kind of like an expression, which we can rearrange eventually. Right, let's have a quick look at this next one now. Okay, so let's differentiate it then. So y squared will become, oh sorry, x squared will become 2x, that's fine. So I want it with respect to x. The dx at the bottom is the with respect 
to x. It's a letter I'm changing the power of, so that's fine. The next one, though, has got the wrong letter. So just differentiate it and stick and divide by the x next to it. Couldn't be easier. It is literally just, if it's the wrong letter, differentiate it, but divide by the x next to it. The 3x becomes a plus 3. The minus 4y, it's the wrong letter, so it's a minus 4, and I stick a dy by the x next to it. And then it's equal to 0, so if I differentiate, and the number it just goes. So look, there is no dy by dx there, I've got some form of expression. Now I can rearrange it, so if I take over everything that doesn't have a dy by dx, so I'd have like a minus 2x minus 3, and on the, this side I've got 2y dy dx, minus 4 dy dx. So then if I take dy by dx out as a factor, And then divide through there. There we go. And that is my gradient function. But if you look now, it's in terms of both x and y. Whenever you've done it in the past, you had a single variable. So this is multivariable. More than one variable. So we're doing multivariable calculus. That's what we're doing. And this is our gradient function. Sounds good when you say multivariable calculus. If you go home after this lesson and say, Mum, I've been doing multivariable calculus, she'd be like, What are you going on about? Right, let's have a look at this one. Oops. So the 3x cubed becomes a 9x squared. The minus 4 is the minus 4y is the wrong letter, so it's minus 4 and then a dy dx. The y squared becomes a 2y with a dy dx, and the x becomes a 1. Do the rearrange, dividing through, we we'll get that, and then that's your function. That's your gradient function. So have a look at the next one. So I've got about a couple of minutes, so I'm going to do this quietly and see if you can follow it. I say that, I'm actually finding it quite hard to be quiet. I've got to use the chain rule, minus, minus, and plus. Wrong letter. Oops. Do it in the reception time. Here's something sneaky. I can actually rewrite that. Oops. Bring it up to the top and make it a plus two. So what I could do as an extra bit, if we wanted to show that, could I change the, the sign on it if I bring it up? And then I can even put it together. Because remember, if you times, you add the powers. What do you think of that? That's pretty awesome, that is. There. See if you can do a similar one on this one. I don't think you can though, looking at that. No, I can't do that one, can you? Right, we're at 9 minutes 30. I think. Is there another, another one? Oh, there is. Right, I'll stop the video and do another one.